Hey everyone, welcome to my review of the Cooler Master Sidon 240M. When pre-built CPU water cooling kits were released, they didn't perform much better than a lot of high-end air coolers. Since then we've had the addition of 240mm radiators which has helped to set them apart a little bit more. There's a lot of these pre-built kits on the market now and Cooler Master has created something of their own. They currently have two product lines, the Sidon and the Iceberg. The Sidon is focused on compatibility, ease of use, it's extremely compact. The Iceberg is a high-end unit and it has some innovative features including a fully customizable water cooling loop. Anyway, I'm now going to get started with a detailed look around the cooler, then I'm going to move on to some testing. So the cooler comes well packaged and in the box is two 120mm fans, all of the necessary mounting hardware and accessories, documentation and the cooler itself. So first of all, a look at the fans. These appear to be Cooler Master Blade Masters. They have the same aesthetics but different specifications. So the specifications are the following. They're a 4-pin PWM fan, 600 to 2400 RPM, 19.17 to 86.15 CFM, 0.31 to 4.16 millimeters H2O, and 19 to 40 decibels. They have a rifle bearing and a life expectancy of 40,000 hours. The fans are all matte black and they have this particular blade design you see on a number of Cooler Master fans. The cables are sleeved and the sleeving is actually fairly high quality. It's great to see decent sleeving on fans. Everything is black including the wiring and connectors. So great looking high performance fans that match up nicely with the cooler. For documentation you get warranty information and a detailed installation guide that shows the installation step by step. Now looking at the mounting components and accessories. This cooler is compatible with all of the currently available sockets, right through from Intel Socket 775 and AMD Socket AM2. It's even compatible with the upcoming Socket 1150. I'm going to take a detailed look at the mounting system shortly, but the mounting components look high quality and the mounting system looks good. You get a PWM splitter, some Cooler Master thermal paste, a whole lot of mounting bolts which are going to allow for a number of different fan configurations, also potentially for push-pull, and also some anti-vibration rubber for the fans. Now looking at the cooler itself. This is a 240mm radiator and it's 27mm thick. I've measured the fin density, it's 20 FPI, fins per inch. So it's a fairly dense fin array, but the fins appear to be thinner than what a lot of manufacturers use, which is 45 microns. Sometimes you'll see 25 micron fins, and that's what these appear to be, or close to it. So that allows for better airflow, even with a dense fin array. The radiator is constructed entirely from aluminium, and the first thing I noticed when I picked up this cooler was how incredibly light it is. It's amazing how often I see rust on the outer panels of radiators. And that's because a lot of manufacturers use steel outer panels. Now there is some problems with using an aluminium radiator. One is the heat conductivity is not going to be as good as say with copper. And also corrosion can be a problem. Galvanic corrosion, if you mix metals in a loop, it can occur. But I'm sure Cooler Master has looked into this and dealt with it potentially with their coolant. And they do have a two-year no-maintenance guarantee. It's also, of course, covered by warranty. A testament to how careful they are with radiators during manufacturing, painting, and packaging is the condition of the finneray. And if you take a look at these fins, they're in almost perfect condition. There's no damaged fins, burnt over fins, and they are very easy to, to damage. You only have to, you know, hold onto the radiator a little bit too tightly and dig your fingers in and you'll bend over the fins. So that's always a good sign. The radiator is painted in a satin black and it's a compact radiator all round. You can see the plenum chambers or end tanks are nice and small. There's no protection under the mounting bolts. Sometimes you'll see plates under the mounting bolts in some radiators, but Cooler Master has dealt with this with their mounting bolts. They only go to a certain depth. This kit is serviceable. You can see there's a port on the radiator which can be opened. So it can be drained and the coolant can be replaced through this port. If you open the port, it voids the warranty, but it's not something you'll need to do inside of the warranty period anyway. It means that it's not just a throwaway unit outside of the maintenance period. The tubing is 
quarter inch FEP tubing. It's extremely durable. I mean, you can bend this tubing as far as you want to and it's not going to kink or break. It has extremely low moisture absorption. It can handle extreme temperatures and pressure. It's certainly not the greatest looking tubing in my opinion, but you know, you're certainly not going to have any problems with it. On the radiator side, you have barbs that are not removable. They're actually part of the radiator. And on this side, you have adjustable fittings that are also not removable. They're adjustable to nearly 180 degrees. So moving on to the pump, it runs at approximately 1400 RPM, which you'll see coming up in the testing. It has a life expectancy of 70,000 hours. The fans have a life expectancy of 40,000 hours, the included fans. So it's a very durable pump and that's because it has a ceramic bearing. It has a noise output of less than 25 decibels. It's a 12 volt three pin pump, so it's not PWM, but it is still adjustable depending on what you connect it up to. It draws a maximum of 0.15 amps and 1.8 watts. The pump cable is also sleeved to match up with the fans. So this is an extremely compact unit considering it's an integrated pump and water block it's amazing how small it is. I'll cover the dimensions shortly. Now the water block has been well designed and optimized. It's cut from a solid piece of copper. As you can see the base almost has a mirror finish. It's certainly smooth enough to create good contact. And the base or cold plate is very thin which creates good heat transfer and on the back side of it is a very fine and very dense fin array. So there's a lot of fins that are very thin and close together. So this is about creating more surface area. And the more surface area you have, the better the heat transfer the performance is going to be. The heatsink is bolted to the unit with 12 stainless steel bolts. Cooler Master has included the full dimensions of this unit on the back of the box. So I've already covered some of these dimensions. The full length of the radiator is 273 millimeters. The full width is 120 millimeters, so it's the same width as the fans. The full diameter of the pump and water block unit is 80 millimeters, and it's 27 millimeters thick, so the same thickness as the radiator. I'm now in the process of installing the fans, and I just wanted to quickly cover the mounting bolts. So you can see the threads are short, which is going to prevent over tightening and protect the radiator. You get three different sizes. You get eight of the longest size, and these are designed to mount the fans between the radiator and the case. They're also long enough to use the rubber silencer, which is fairly thick. Then you get 16 of the medium mounting bolts, which are designed to mount the fans directly to the radiator. They're also long enough for the rubber silencer. So there is enough bolts here for push-pull. And you also get the shortest mounting bolts which is designed to mount the radiator directly to the case. So a number of different configurations are available with the stock mounting bolts. The mounting system is good. It's very easy to mount. A lot of the components have been integrated so that there is less components. And that's what you want with a mounting system like this, the least amount of components possible. And really there's only three main components. There's two mounts which you need to attach to the unit itself. And the back plate is adjustable for different sockets. It fits onto the back of the motherboard with nuts on the other side and the cooler then screws down onto these nuts. It's not a tallest design. You do need a Phillips head screwdriver for some of it, but it's incredibly quick and easy. It took me less than five minutes and the instructions almost aren't even necessary. I've installed the cooler and it's now time to start the testing. You can really see how compact it actually is once it's installed. The pump and water block unit is so low profile it's actually sitting below the thermal armor surrounding it on the Asus Sabertooth Z77. You can see it has a blue power on LED on top of the pump. Now the specifications of this testbed are the following. The testbed itself is the Micro Cool Band Shadow 101. I have the Asus Sabertooth Z77 Intel Core i7-3770K, 8GB of G-School Ripjaws X, a Sapphire 7770, Corsair AX650 and a Corsair Force 360GB SSD. Now I have the pump and also both of the fans connected to a fan controller. The reason I've done this is so that you can see the RPMs. Also because I'm going to change the RPMs of both of the fans for one of the tests. So the pump is sitting around 1400 RPM and the fans are sitting around 
2300 RPM, their maximum is 2400 RPM and I have them turned all the way up to 12 volts. Okay, I'm going to start with the noise output results of the stock configuration with the fans and pump running at 100%. This unit is designed for the fans to be RPM controlled. That's why the PWM fans with a large RPM range, they come with a PWM splitter so that you can connect both of the fans to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Then you can set up fan profiles in the BIOS. And you need to make sure you do this because at 2400 RPM, these fans are incredibly loud. They're not supposed to run at 2400 RPM all of the time. They don't need to. But that headroom is there when you need it. Now for some of my testing, I use a decibel meter. It only goes down to 30 decibels. It's certainly not the most accurate way of reading noise output. It just gives you a rough idea. So now for a listen to the fans and pump running at 100%. Now the pump is very quiet, it's normally inaudible, the only reason you can hear it in this clip is because I have the camera right up next to it. Now moving on to the temperature results. For all of my testing I mathematically adjust my ambient temperature to 20 degrees Celsius. For each configuration I do an idle test and a load test. For the idle test I cold boot the system and let it idle for 30 minutes. For the load test, I run Prime95 small FFT for 30 minutes. My results are an average of the CPU cores. I'm also doing a stock clocks test and an overclocked test for each configuration. The overclock is 4.4 GHz, 1.3 volts. I'm including results from a high-end air cooler, the Noctua NHD14. The reason I'm using the NHD14 is because out of all of the high-end air coolers I've tested and also some pre-built water cooling kits, it's remained on top. I'm also including results from a high-end custom-built water cooling loop with the following specifications. The EK Supremacy Swiftec MCP35X with an EK CSQ pump top, Alpha Cool Nexus Monster 360mm radiator with Cougar Vortex 120mm fans, a Bitspower Z-Tube 150, Bitspower Black Sparkle fittings, Primo Chill Advanced Tubing, and Mayhem's X1 UV Red Coolant. I tested three different fan configurations on the Cooler Master Sidon 240M. First of all, the stock fans at 100%. I then tested it with the stock fans running at 1400 RPM. And as you can see, the difference in the temperature results is negligible. It's within margin of error. So it just shows that with this particular configuration at least, turning the fans right down hardly makes a difference. Now the reason I used 1400 RPM in particular is because I just continued to turn the fans down until they became inaudible. So at this RPM, the fans are very quiet. I then tested the cooler with some premium fans. Noise blocker PLPS. These fans run at 1500 RPM and they have a noise output of 24 decibels and they were noticeably louder than the stock fans running at 1400 RPM and as you can see the results are actually slightly worse so it just goes to show how good those stock fans actually are you can see that the Noctua NHD14 results are close some of them slightly better the stock clock results the overclock results were slightly worse but they're just you know so close and then the custom water cooling loop, as is to be expected, the results are a lot better. But obviously, you're going to put a lot more money into a custom water cooling loop than, you know, something like the Cooler Master Sidon 240M. Okay, to conclude this review, what does the Cooler Master Sidon 240M have that other pre-built CPU water cooling kits don't? Personally, I like the aesthetics. They're clean and subtle. You don't have big logos everywhere and bright lights. There's just small logos that are hard to see once it's installed. And there is a power on LED. It's there for practical reasons and it doesn't put out much light. It's also extremely compact. Really one of the most compact units available. You can see that Cooler Master has designed it to be as compact as possible. Better fan specifications than a lot of other manufacturers provide higher RPM range, higher CFM, and static pressure. It also has a very simple, easy to deal with mounting system. I was impressed with the mounting system. 
and it seems to be one of the most aggressively priced pre-built CPU water cooling kits available from what I've seen. Now something that continues to disappoint me about these pre-built kits is the performance. It's still on par and sometimes even worse than high-end air coolers. Some optimizations need to be made to really set these apart from high-end air coolers. And actually in saying that, I mentioned the Cooler Master Iceberg at the beginning of this video. And that is certainly heading in the direction that I'm talking about. Hopefully I can get it in for testing at some point. So there is other reasons to go for a pre-built CPU water cooling kit over a high-end air cooler. You know, it does move more of the heat away from the other components. It can act as an exhaust. But, you know, overall, they need to be set apart from high-end air coolers when it comes to performance. So I'm going to give the Cooler Master Sardin 240M an 8 out of 10. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and favorite if you want to see more.